Uh, another days of OTAs, guys, brought us some really beautiful sights. This, oh my gosh, this was amazing. You this sent is, me this. This was, this was incredible. I love the slow-mo right at the end, too, to really get that toe tap. It's Joe Burrow. would be proud. Yeah, do a little toe drag swag there. <laughs> Jamar Chase. Uh, gosh, we also got amazing sound, though. We got to hear from a lot of stars around the league um, as they, you know, they sort of warm up in front of the mics uh, at OTAs. We haven't heard from them in a while. We got Rodgers on Tuesday, and yesterday we got more quarterbacks. So let's start with Lamar Jackson here. After some overreactions to not being at the Ravens camp earlier this uh, week, he was there. He talked about the importance of being there to learn the new offense. We heard an exciting Lamar when it came to discussing Todd Monken's system. And he gave us a little insight into what's going to be different this year. You know, less running and more throwing, I see. You know, I hear a lot of noise about throwing and stuff like this, yards to achieve and stuff, but I'm not really worried about the yards as much. It's, it's about us just winning. So that, that'll be all the winning category, if anything. Running, not going, running can only take you so far, you know, and I feel like with, with this new era of uh, teams and offenses in the league, I, I feel like we need that in Coach Todd Monk. And what I'm saying, his offense so far is looking tremendous. You know, you can change things when you want to. You know, you see the defense is not looking right to you. Um, see some guy blitzing. You might want your receiver to do something different. Coach giving you the free will to do whatever you want to. I literally love everything he's saying because it's, yeah. I'm, you know, full of myself and... <laughs> narcissistic and it's exactly what I said so he's agreeing with me completely I have said for years yeah yeah and every, a lot of people want to say I've heard I've worked with a lot of people that wanted to say run the ball it's what you do it's what you do best go and that's okay it's not okay if you want to win a Super Bowl it's just not yeah. Lamar saying less running more throwing more downfield passing more control for Lamar yeah. that's exactly what I wanted to hear before the OC search even started yeah and this even goes back a couple of years because I remember there was the argument of you know running helped Lamar get the MVP it gets the Ravens to the playoffs but your argument was always it's not about the playoffs it's, it's about winning that. Super Bowls but what really jumped out to me there was you mentioned the control yeah. and Lamar talked about having the keys to the offense and being able to make checks at the line of scrimmage and that was something that was really curious to me. Basically, he's saying in Greg Roman's system, he wasn't allowed to audible and make adjustments at the line, which is kind of crazy for me for a quarterback now going into his fifth year. I'm interested to ask Gronk about that and see what he has to say, because obviously he was with a quarterback who was the best at making checks at the line of scrimmage, and their whole offense was kind of predicated on that. How much of a difference it can make in this Ravens offense, giving Lamar that type of freedom. And giving him those type of weapons. Odell, Zay, yeah. Bateman, Andrews. I mean, we've been waiting for this version of Lamar to be unleashed for literally five years. So um, we also, guys, heard from, from this other one MVP to another, uh, Patrick Mahomes yesterday, guys. There have been rumblings about him getting another extension or redoing it or whatever that might look like. He addressed his approach to those negotiations very thoughtful, as he always does. He's a master at the microphone, and here's some of the highlights from that. I've always said I, I worry about legacy and winning rings more than making money at this moment. Um, but uh, I'm, I know we keep communication. We see what's going on, on around the league. Um, but at the same time, I'll never do anything that's going to hurt us from keeping the great players around me. So it's kind of teetering around that line. You just want to do whatever to not hurt other quarterbacks whenever they their contracts come up. You want to kind of keep the the bar pushing, um, and so I, it's not about being the highest paid guy. It's not about making a ton of money. I'm I, I've made enough money where I'll be set for the rest of my life. Um, but at the same time, you got to find that line where you're making a good amount of money, but you're still keeping a lot of great players around you, so you can win these Super Bowls and you're able to compete in these games. It's so complicated. Yeah. And it's a polarizing conversation. And people, you know, it's what it's how do you value a few million? It's almost that. Yeah. How do you value a few million when you have 20 and when you don't, you know, or when you have 40 and when you have 60? Like, what is the, it's a and, and he makes it a bigger deal. He's going macro what it means for the landscape of quarterbacks getting paid and broke off in the league for years to come if he takes a little. It's yeah. wild. And so it sounds a little bit like they're keeping tabs on it. Joe Burrow getting a contract is going to have an effect on what Patrick Mahomes' team and his side are going to talk to the Chiefs about. And my goodness, uh, it, this is super interesting, and there's kind of three elements to this, right? I mean, first off, after this second MVP and this second ring, I think we can all agree Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the National Football League right now. 
But if you look at the way these contracts are going, take a look here. He slipped all the way to seventh, the seventh highest paid quarterback in the league on a per year basis. He took he took a he took a discount. If you look at it, yeah, his, at his this deal looked not scary at all. About two months after he signed it, which is <laughs> yeah. great, and he'll move to ninth. By the way, when Burrow and Herbert sign, he'll move to almost out of the top ten as far as quarterbacks are concerned. It's crazy. Yeah, so that has to be fixed at some point. He knows that they know it. I like that they're talk. I like that they're talking about it. Yeah. God, please, none of that. Talk about it. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't need to scrap for every cent. He sort of said that and alluded to that, like he says. He's pretty much set for life regardless. But you do want to make sure you're getting a fair value for you and whoever's behind you. And that's insane. It's supposed to be tough. What do you think? Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, it's just an interesting position that he's in now because he's kind of saying all the right things, but there's no, like, easy answer, right? Because no matter what he does... You know, if he takes the full value, the other quarterbacks are happy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it could hurt his team. If he takes less, it helps his team. But then the other quarterbacks are like, dude, you hurt my bargaining power now because there's no way I'm going to get paid more than you. So you, like, put a cap on what we can make. So I, I, I know Chris Jones. Well, let's talk about these players. I know Chris yeah. Jones wants an extension. Will you take me through this and, like, what's going on? Because the whole thing is about how do I become flexible with these players. Exactly. And when you look at over the next two years, basically all their key players – other than Travis Kelsey, are due for new deals. And Chris Jones is the one they really want to get done right now. But he mentions even in that press conference, like Jerry Sneed is a big point of emphasis. And then you look at 2025, I mean, Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith have both been such a crucial part of this team being able to revamp its offense without Tyreek Hill. That offensive line has been so strong. And then obviously a bunch of pieces to that defense too. So there are a lot of deals that are going to have to work out. So, you know, if he's able to give the team flexibility with this new contract, it's going to help them stay in contention. And if he doesn't, that roster is going to start to erode pretty quickly. I didn't think he'd mention the third part of it, which is the how, how does it affect other quarterbacks down the pipeline? Like, should he care? That's the sort of how much should I look into that? How much of that is even true yeah. if he takes the team-friendly deal? So looking into that, let's say Mahomes, guys, takes an extension for $40 million a year, right? That will mess up the market. Yeah. So are the quarterbacks and sort of hurt their ability to negotiate new deals. It seems like Mahomes sort of embraced this responsibility. And it, I mean, I know it's like kind of a first world problem, but it's kind of tough too to, you know, have to take your family, your team, the entire quarterback position into account. And this is a lot. And it's the fact that he says it, it's a weird thing for him to say if it's not something that's on his mind and his heart. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, as you said, the way these teams look at negotiations, they're going to be like, oh, Mahomes is only making four. You're not getting paid more than Mahomes. It does happen. Yeah. Um, but okay, I have to bring something else up in all this because you've called me a sicko for some of my deep offseason dives. But there was some real serious sicko stuff going on in this Kansas City press conference from both the media and Mahomes. The first question, the first one when he gets up to the podium, Our Mizzou kid. was about Blaine yeah. Gabbert. And even sicker, listen to his answer. <laughs> Since he's been in the building, he's been a, a true pro, and um, he's he's came in. You can see the talent. You see why he was a, I think, I believe top ten draft pick or a first round draft pick, and the arm strength, and everything like that. And he was just backing up with Tom, so I'm asking him for any advice he can give me, because if you're learning from that guy, you're learning from the right guy. So uh, just another good quarterback, good guy that can be in that quarterback room. I mean, Patrick, you're coming off of a second MVP, a second Super Bowl ring, and you're spending your offseason in trying to pry Tom Brady's secret sauce out of my guy, Blaine Gabbert. Yeah. It's the type of deranged behavior I can really get behind. Yeah, and you're, you're in all seriousness, it, get, it really does give you an insight into the mentality and the work ethic that's made Mahomes successful. Brady would that do that. Exactly. Brady would do that. Can you, like, I'm sure he would. And we can ask yeah. Gronk about it. I mean, I don't know why Patrick Mahomes doesn't just join the FanDuel family like we'd like, and then you could just phone Rob Gronkowski and say, tell me everything that Tom Brady ever did and said, and, you know, it could just be an really easier streamline than you having to bother Blaine Gabbert about it. I'm just saying. That's a great point. I'm just saying. Yeah. When I think of Blaine Gabbert, I think of, obviously, Mizzou, but I also think, why, why, why do shorts come to my mind? Oh, the short shorts. He, he likes to show off the legs that in OTAs why? in training camp. Yeah. I think of gym shorts. Yeah. Yep. What? <laughs> that's, that's what's in my mind. What's in Gronk's mind? We're going to go Mrs. Frizzle style into the brain of Rob Gronkowski. After this, great stuff from Hamilton. We heard from Lamar Jackson. We heard from Patrick Mahomes. Aaron Rodgers got hurt being like a mule. Okay. All right, Gaston from Beauty and the Beast is on next.